Most people think their Wi-Fi is safe just because it has a password. Let me tell you something, it's really not. If that password is weak and someone knows what they're doing, your network is basically wide open. They can break in, steal your bandwidth, spy on your devices, even launch attacks, all from inside your own network. So today I'm going to show you exactly how Wi-Fi password hacking works step by step. Because if you don't understand how the attack works, you can't defend against it. All right, before we crack anything, we need to understand understand what we're actually going after. Not all Wi-Fi networks are built the same. Some are easy to break into, others are tougher. It all depends on the type of security the router is using. So before we actually hack into a Wi-Fi network, let's quickly break down the types of Wi-Fi security you'll run into in the world and which ones are really worth your time. All right, first up, we've got WEP. This is the ancient wireless security method, weak and outdated. You can think of this like putting a lock on your front door, but it is made out of Legos. This can be cracked in seconds using basic tools and if you see a WEP network today it's basically free real estate. Next is WPA. This came right after WEP and tried to patch some of its flaws. It's slightly better but it still has well-known vulnerabilities. It's not super common anymore but if you do run into it it's definitely easily breakable. Alright next we have WPA2. This is the one you'll see the most out in the world. It's the default on most modern routers and it uses stronger encryption and better overall protection. But the catch is that it's only really secure if the password is strong. If someone sets their password to password 123, WPA2 might as well be wide open. This is where most real world Wi-Fi hacking happens and it's exactly what we're mainly going to focus on this video as well. Finally, we also have WPA3. This is the newest and most secure option out there and it uses more advanced encryption and a better key exchange process, which makes this whole handshake capturing much, much harder there is still a problem with this because not every device or router supports WPA3 yet. So while it's growing, a huge chunk of networks are still stuck on WPA2 and that's what attackers are commonly targeting. All right, before we start doing anything, we need three things the right hardware, the right tools, and the right word list. First, for the hardware, you'll need a wireless adapter that supports monitor mode and packet injection. Now, the monitor mode lets you listen all the wireless traffic around you and not just what's meant for your device. And packet injection lets you actively send packets like deauthentication signals. Some built-in Wi-Fi cards support these features, but not all of them do, so you need to verify before wasting your time. And to check if your adapter supports monitor mode, you can run this command here, IWList. This command will list your wireless capabilities, and when you run it, you're gonna want to look under the supported interface mode section, and if you see monitor listed there, it means your adapter can be switched into monitor mode. Now, to test for injection support, you can use a tool called Airplay NG. If you run this command here, a replay ng dash dash test followed by the wireless interface you have this command will send out test packets to check if the adapter can inject them into the air and then listens to see if any responses come back if responses are received it will say something like injection is working now once you got the right hardware the next step is having the right tools for basic wi-fi hacking we'll be using tools from the aircrack ng suite like aero dump tool which is used for scanning and capturing handshakes the a replay tool which is used for kicking clients off networks and finally the air crack tool which is used for cracking passwords offline now having the rightware and tools is only half the game because without a solid word list you're basically shooting in the dark and a good word list massively boosts your chances of cracking the password if the password is something like i love pizza it'll be cracked in seconds because these kinds of easily guessable passwords are in every major word list and tools we use today can run millions of guesses per second with the right hardware Every time a device connects to a WPA2 protected Wi-Fi network, whether that's your phone, your laptop, whatever, the router and the device perform a quick handshake to authenticate each other and securely agree on encryption keys. And if we can capture that handshake, we can then try to crack it offline using a word list. Now, we don't need to be connected. We just need to catch the handshake while it happens. Now, to see other wireless traffic around us, we need to switch our wireless adapter from manage mode, which is what we normally use, to 
monitor mode. And to do this, all you have to do is to use the Airmon NG tool. So if you run sudo Airmon NG start followed by your wireless adapter name, and you can check the wireless adapter name with IPA command. So this command will simply change your adapters mode to monitor mode. And keep in mind, if you see any warning about network manager or other processes interfering, you can always kill them with this command here, sudo Airmon NG check kill. This command will simply prevent packet interference with your Wi-Fi adapter, but it will likely disable your internet until you restart those processes or reboot. After you put your adapter in monitor mode, you can then start scanning the radio waves and see what networks are around you. And to do this, you're going to use the AeroDump NG tool. Now, if you run AeroDump NG followed by your wireless interface name, this will open a live feed of every Wi-Fi network in range. And it's going to be full of valuable information like the name of the network, MAC addresses of the routers, the channels, signal strength, encryption type, and much more. Here, what we're going to be looking is going to be a WPA2 secured network, ideally at least one client connected to the network, and a strong enough signal, which can be anything above minus 60. Once you got your eyes on a target, you will want to isolate and monitor just that network to keep the capture file clean. And in this case, we will only focus on this network right here called the juice shot. To only monitor this this network, we can craft a command using a Rodom tool. We will need to specify the MAC address of the access point, the channel it is running, and finally write all the packets coming into this network, like the handshakes we are interested in, to a file called capture.cap. So the command will look like this, a Rodom ng dash dash bssid followed by the MAC address of the router or the access point, dash c followed by the channel this network is on, dash w followed by the output file, and finally we specify the name of the wireless interface. After typing this command, now you'll only see your target network. And if any clients are already connected to this network, you will see them under the station section. We will have to keep capturing these packets until we finally grab a handshake out of the air. All right, now we wait for a handshake. But here's the problem. What if no one connects to this network? What if the clients just stay connected or there is no new connection happening? We don't want to just sit there hoping someone will finally connect. We can actually force this process. If there's already a device connected to the network, we can run a deauthentication attack to kick that client off the network. And the moment they reconnect, the handshake will be captured. And to do this, you need to open a second terminal window while still keeping this AeroDump terminal open. And in the second terminal, we will use a replay ng tool to run this command a replay ng dash dash d authentication. And then we will specify the packet numbers we want to send. Afterwards, we specify the MAC address of the access point with dash a flag. And then finally, our wireless interface name. Once you run this command and go back to your aero dump window, you'll now see that you might have a message that says something like WPA handshake followed by the MAC address of the access point. And this just means that you just captured the handshake even when the clients were not planning to reconnect. Now the capture file we specified earlier will contain the encrypted handshake data. All right, now that we got our handshake, it's now time to crack it. Now what we're going to do is to take that capture file that contains the encrypted handshake and feed it into a cracking tool that tries different passwords until one of them matches. And to crack the handshake, we will run a command that looks like this. Here, the dash W points to your word list. And in this case, we use the famous rock you word list, which has millions of words in it. And finally, we specify the capture file, which is the file where our handshake is saved. When we run this command, aircrack takes each word from the rock you list and encrypts it the same way WPA2 does and compares those results to the captured handshake. If there is a match, then it simply means you got the password and you will see key found written on your terminal. And in this case, we were actually able to crack it. The password was dragonfly87. The truth about this process is that it can be fast, but it can also be painfully slow. So your success here will depend entirely on your word list. And the better the word list, the better your chances are. So you might ask, what does all of this actually mean? Well, the truth is that most home and small business networks today still rely on WPA2. And this entire process shows how fragile that can be if the password is weak. If your router or device is supported, one of the smartest things you can do right now is to upgrade to WPA3. Unlike WPA2, WPA3 doesn't use the same four way handshake system, which means attackers can't just sit back, capture your traffic and crack it offline. But until WPA3 
security is everywhere, your best defense is still your password. Make it long, random, and completely unguessable. Avoid names, dates, or anything remotely predictable. Wi-Fi hacking isn't really magic. It's just a simple method and anyone with the right tools and patience can pull it off. So now that you've seen exactly how this works, protect your own network like you'd expect an attacker to come knocking.